Hello guys, Nato Ace here, and this is going to be the fiscal year ending of March 2016, the Nintendo Financial Report. So another year come, this is their whole, the fiscal year, basically what it is, is their whole report, how they do, again, in the, between starting of April 2015 all the way to March 2016. <coughs> so like I said in my previous video, Nintendo related, the, the basically the the premise is 61% down on their earnings that means they're not really making a lot of profit sales for Wii U are down no surprise there 3DS kind of like starting to slow down because v gamers who are Nintendo fan probably bought 3DS not in, maybe the 3DS 2DS now it's only the people who are into gaming maybe they I'll try getting a Nintendo handheld console or a portable console, portable gaming system. Or maybe also Wii U also. So basically that's the reason why the both systems are not selling so much than what it is. So with that, same deal what I did last time, I'm just gonna give my thoughts on certain thing that interests me. I did talk already about the bombshell that they did that Kinishima basically talked about. So I'll probably talk more in depth here. So with that, let's see. So basically the first thing here is the recapping, of course, recap for the fiscal year ending March 2016 and recent sale. So the first thing they talk about is the sale for 3 days. Again, to some extent as gamers, we don't really care to some extent, most of the majority of gamers probably don't care about the sale. If you see, but you do, like I said before, I'm going to say it again. You're going to have to keep that a, a bit in the back of your head. If it pours, if the sales are poor, they're not going to support it. They're not going to make money. Maybe it'll disappear. But again, it is what it is. Hey, you know, I, I always say, it doesn't matter whether I like the franchise or not. If it's not to my preference, I'm going to vote me my wallet. Uh, you know, I can't be biased because, you know, uh, okay, moving on. Alright, uh, first one here is the 3DS system sold a broad install base with more than 56 million sold. So basically, as of the second week of April, this is like their lifetime, they basically sold 56 million 3DS. Doesn't mean 56 million people bought them. It could be also that, like like a lot of people said, the retailer, the company like Target, Best Buy, GameStop, etc. said, we need to buy them, maybe they'll buy it in our store. But still, you know, hey, you know, at least it's a good number as of right now. Let's see if it actually can go more. And then apparently in Japan, uh, their software, I guess, is not really as top as it used to be in 2014 and 2015. And apparently, two games that they sh did show is, I have no idea, the second one. But the first one is Dragon Quest Monsters 3. But I have the other games, like for the DS. They're okay. If you like Pokemon mixed with Dragon Quest, they Dragon Quest Monsters for you. Oh, the second one is apparently is, they call it Yokai Sangoshi. Never really played a Yokai game yet, I really should. Uh, so, excuse me, next pick is their sales ranking of game in overall. And apparently number one in Japan is Master Hunter Cross. Eh, not surprised in Japan. Believe it or not, a lot of people like Monster Hunter, not in the West, but in Japan. That's what made Capcom's money, is because of Monster Hunter, <laughs> believe it or not. So, interesting. Number two, Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. That is actually interesting, because unfortunately in America, as expected, not a lot of people are Animal Crossing fans, so... Happy Home Designer, yep, not really selling well. I'm an Animal Crossing fan, so I'm a sucker, but you know... Whatever. Uh, okay, then. Th 
third one is Splatoon. No surprise there. And again, it's on Japan and basically from 2003 to 2016, like their total sale. Alright, I'm just gonna say number four is Yokai Wash Buster Shiro Inu Tai. And then number five is Yokai Watch Busters Akane Kodan. Basically, it's their Pokemon version. I don't know if that's going to come in America. Super Mario Maker, no surprise. Master Strike, I don't know what it is. Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix, wow, apparently popular in Japan. So, is it, I heard rumor that it might come in America. We'll see. And. Minecraft PlayStation Vita Edition, which is why would you gonna put that there? That's a Vita game. That's from Sony. <laughs> okay, whatever. That's weird. That's something funny. All right. Well, so anyway, that's the Japanese one. Now we're switching to America. U.S. Nintendo 3DS first party software sales trend. So apparently, it's dif different situation in Japan. In 2016, actually did better than 2014 when it comes to mm, selling a 3 days game. But here's the kicker: why? You see this here? CY16. That's 2016. Nintendo Select launch. Remember, I talk about Nintendo Select that in March 20th they release it. Boom! What did I say? You put the game, a good game, for 20 bucks. Nintendo Select. Boom! There you go. And but no, they they love the evergreen system. They love the ever the ever green strategy because again, you know, why lower the game if the game's too good? Because nobody's gonna buy them. You want more people to buy your games? You can't have your cake and eat it too for crying out loud. So see, the Nintendo Select like help. See, ah, ah. Mind boggles me. Oops, drop something. Anyway, moving on. And then, if you notice, know, a picture of Fire Emblem Fate, Birthright, and Conquest. And I do have Birthright. I'll once I finish that game, I'm eventually gonna get the other game. But again, even so, the sell well, sold well. I'm still upset. I'm still disappointed for Nintendo. Censorship 2016. I know. And I know the censorship really shouldn't be a big deal because it basically it's a petting mini game which you get to pet or I guess the word is with your 3DS touch your friend. I know that's so the way I saw sound is so weird and that's the reason why they removed it. And yeah, Rich, who's the market for Nintendo, used to be an IGN Nintendo voice chat basically said they had to do it for market reason because as for me as a gamer I know the back history what if a general consumer what if the parents say well I want to buy that for my kid which is technically for teenagers and above but whatever say a teenager gamer wants to begin into game he was hit with Fire Emblem Fate so maybe his parents say oh there's Fire Emblem Fate and, all, and again, the general consumer, a general on the consumer brand, and then all of a sudden they say, "Wait, I heard this game has you, you get to pet your friend. What well, would you like a like a simulation? That's kind of like you know the word creepy, so that remove it. I don't agree with it, but that's the re that's one of the reason why because you have to think about the general consumer. Like, wow, this game has you can." Pet people, that's weird. And it's not Nintendogs and cats. But still, censorship 2016, I'm sorry. So, okay. And no surprise. U.S. Fire Emblem Fates. Why? Ever since the 1990 with the NES and the Super Nintendo, Fire Emblem, the franchise, never been in America. The very first one was on the Game Boy Advance was the fir first Fire Emblem, I bought it hard game, I didn't like the permanent idea but like I said that was the first one with Elwood and um, Lyra I think that's the story and then of course spoiler Elwood 
the rumor was. I, got, I may be wrong. It's supposed to be Roy's son. Who knows? Or descendant. Whatever. In Japan, Fire Emblem been since the NES days. And look what what they say about the U.S. Sold over half a million, selling better than in Japan. Gee, I wonder why. Oh, maybe it's a new... Well, it's not really new IP in America, but... It wasn't long, because you never released the one for the Super Nintendo and the freaking NES. The first one was on the GBA. That's why it sold better. Japan, launched on 2015 of June 25th. Because again, you know, they can't sell it worldwide because of localization, treehouse. Treehouse are not big localization. You know the story. So, look at it. Boom, by the end of week 10, it surpassed the sales of the Japanese. So, again, kudos to Fire Emblem. And then, of course, U.S. Fire Emblem Fate, long-selling series. Again, Japan, it's... I, I don't know why it's really, like, only within before 14 weeks, while in Japan went to 40 weeks. U.S. previous title with the GBA, the one with Japan, because again they got over, it got oversaturated because there's too many Fire Emblem. Let's let's just put it this way: that the reason why Fire Emblem is selling better in, in U.S. because it, it never it wasn't yet oversaturated because it wasn't enough Fire Emblem was offered in America versus in Japan. But believe it or not, here's the plot twist. In Japan, there are some games, American games, that the Japanese likes to play that never been in Japan. Call of Duty, first person shooter, believe it or not, in Japan, it's becoming popular. And before that, it wasn't. And something new that never been in Japan, boom, fire first. Another one, strategy games. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, so the, the thing I'm trying to say here is sometimes games that come from other country is interesting and if you do it right, it'll sell better. So you gotta take a bit of risk. You may be boom. You'll basically sell. That's why Fire Emblem is selling because it's still, it's still new in America. And maybe in Japan, the vice versa, some American game again Maybe Uncharted, maybe Tomb Raider to some extent, or uh, like I said, first person shooter. There are people who like, uh, what is that game? Resistance at one point, believe it or not, so, ah, whatever, but kudos to Fire Emblem, awesome. Alright, we'll go to the next page and I think, come on, is it frozen? Okay. Europe, Nintendo 3DS first party sale. Uh, well, unfortunately, got lower than even. Well, 2015 was better, but 2016 was low. Europe, PlayStation country, enough said. And apparently, the game that sold well there was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, the new one. But apparently, in Europe, Tomodachi Life is super popular. I guess it came in late. Kinda sad. Moving on. Europe Nintendo Select launch. They got better ones in America. Kinda suck. They got tennis. They got the Nintendo series. Link of Two Worlds. Star Fox in America. We got crappy ones. I'm sorry. But again, again, before select, after select, before select, after select. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, got Nintendo, gotta do more Nintendo Select. And th this is not just in Europe, it's also in America. Hey, hey, hey. Alright, there you go. Japan slash North America launch of discounted edition. Nintendo Select. I don't know what in Japan called. Expand reach with the female and young consumer. That can, again, the reach, the female and the young consumer. They're not being sexist per se, but Nintendo basically to some extent folk mostly are people who grew up with Nintendo and for the new gamer, 
teenager to young adult. That's where they keep focused. They keep saying young. Because the younger one, they don't play Nintendo games. Because I have talked to kids, and when they show them about Nintendo, they're like, what is this? What, what do they like? Well, PS3 and 360 game, they like sometimes the grown-up game, like Call of Duty, uh, or Grand Theft Auto. Another one is Minecraft. Kids love Minecraft. I, I'm too old to understand Minecraft. I never really played it, but by looking at it, I don't really understand it. Unfortunately, I'm old. But again, what I'm trying to say here, again, the Nintendo Select, look at it. Okay, okay, forget about the Japanese, look at it. Again, a lot of people keep buying before, but after, it get better. Look at it in the US, 3DS. Before, after. Before, after. Wii U. Before, after. Before, after. Nintendo, here's my suggestion. A year or a year and a half, when the game launched. If it sold already one million at launch at full price, maybe you should do Nintendo Select and people will buy them. Ah? Uh, ah? Uh? Ugh, jeez. Alright, Nintendo 3DS software total unit ship worldwide. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Sh okay. Ship basically meaning to retailers, to the store, like Target, Walmart, etc, etc, etc. This is worldwide. That means America, Europe, and Japan. Pokemon X and Y, 14.70 million. That's pretty good, worldwide. Ruby and Sapphire, 11.84. That's actually good for a remake. Tomodachi, 4.98. No surprise, because it's not really so much of a game, per se. Animal Crossing, well, that's pretty good. I mean, it's popular in Japan, not so much in America. So that's decent. Same goes with news from my brothers, too. The reason it should be more. Uh, but the problem is, I, I guess, is it's more of Godfather Mario, because it's all about coins. So Mario Kart 7, yeah, sold. Well, that makes sense. Mario 3D Land. Uh, but I guess the whole point is that now people have portable or probably also they rather have Galaxy than 3D Land. And then of course Smash Brothers, no surprise there. They would rather buy the Wii U version than the 3DS. <coughs> Alright, excuse me. So now we're going to go to the Wii U. As of second week of April, sell through over 12 million units. It's official, folks. It's the worst console sold for Nintendo. It even surpassed the GameCube. It was supposed. To, people thought the GameCube was sold worse. Now it's the Wii U. 12 million as of basically the second week of April. Are people buying more Wii U? Probably not. Why do you move Wii U? Easy. Price drop. So, here's a spoiler. Nintendo. I, one thing I want to see for Nintendo. Maybe it's an E3. Maybe later down. Maybe in July, August. Make an announcement. Nintendo Wii U. One, two fifty. The launch price for the Wii. Or better yet, one ninety nine for the Wii U. This two ninety nine thing, it's not working anymore. Let it drop. One ninety nine, it will move Wii U. Cut your losses and just move on. NX is going to be March twenty seventeen. There you go. Make them buy the Wii U. Give them a reason. One ninety nine, even better. One forty nine. You're gonna be moving a lot of Wii U's. Just saying. Okay, Japanese sale for Wii U. Interesting. Better than even. Wow, it's really better than 2015. And I guess the two biggest one is Twilight Princess HD. I bought it. It's free fun. Pokemon tournament. Maybe down the line. Ah. Same goes with same goes with America. Pokemon tournament and Zelda HD. 
no surprise there. Again, 20, 2016, it actually moved Wii. U. Well, it didn't really move Wii U, but people who already have Wii U, of course, they're gonna buy that. Well, no duh. Okay, well, not so much in Europe, but in the same game. Again, we gotta keep in mind, Europe is Sony territory. Most people, they're like Sony console. They love their PlayStation, then their Wii U's. <laughs> Nothing personal. It's just a fact. Okay, now they're gonna talk about Splatoon. And why is that Splatoon? And I did a video already, part two, of why I don't think Splatoon is $60. And you can check that out. But here's a little gist of it. In May 2015, that was $60. By April 2016, yeah, it had more stages, has more guns, more mode, and Splatfest, especially Splatfest, people want to play Splatfest. There you go. But again, Nintendo, don't pull this crap. Don't do any cop-out. Oh, well, we have this game, but long down the line, we're going to add more as a DLC. I mean, granted, the total update for Splatoon, for the update, is close to 500 megabytes. So, wow. I'm surprised. So, it wasn't that big. I thought it would be big. I know Street Fighter V is. Again, surprisingly, so kudos to Splatoon. And, of course, every activity had been high since the beginning of the year. That's May 2015. And, point and a half over, the game owner participated in uh, Splatfest. No, yeah, it's a no duh, same here. They're basically saying a lot of people, when you have Splatoon, you do participate with Splatfest. So, I have props, because same here, like, I got a lot of games. I Oh, it's Splatfest. Should I play Street Fighter V? Should I play Dynasty Warrior 8? Dragon Quest Heroes? Tales of Zeteria? Or should I go waste my time playing Splatfest? Splatfest it is. Uh, kudos to that one. And then apparently, in Japan, because Splatfest is popular in Japan, because it's a new IP, this, they did swag. Swag helped sell more Splatoon games in Japan, so that's awesome. Amiibo. As of 2016, 24.7 million Amiibo been sold worldwide. Yeah, and surprisingly the card is more worldwide ever since September. <laughs> and again, blind bag, Nintendo, screw you. But that's pretty good, you know. And of course, if you know in the news, on June it's going to be the Kirby series, July, Wave 2 Splatoon, Kali and Mari, and then a recolor Splatoon. However, is it going to be a different challenge? Is it a different offering than the original one, or is it going to be the same one? We'll see. And of course, a Splatoon Amiibo, very popular in Japan. That's interesting. Nearly one million units had been sold in Japan. Wow. Not so much in America. Not people really care about some Amiibo. I mean, as of right now, I do see the girl and the guy Amiibo. And once in a while, we'll see the tree pack. And then... Oh, boy. Amiibo becoming evergreen in U.S. Some Amiibo figures are becoming evergreen and contributing to the sale of a long period. Well, if they're not in Ross, if they're not in Dollar General, they're not in TJ Maxx or Marshall, then yeah, surprisingly, I've been seeing Skylander at Ross and Marshall for five bucks. I'm starting to see Disney Infinity going down the price and seeing them in Dollar General, Family Dollar, but not even one Amiibo, not even one Amiibo I had never seen. Either the big major retail store, Amazon, but to some extent they do lower the price, especially the Animal Crossing series. No surprise, I knew that was going to happen. Bought some of mine like really cheap, so there you go, but Smash Brother line, 
no surprise, especially in America, Link, as of right now, been a year and a half, he's still $13, but again, they're not really that expensive, if you're making money, for a kid, yeah, but then if you're a kid, you're probably either going for Disney Infinity, Skylander, or you're just probably playing Minecraft, who knows. But yeah, there is going to be like evergreen for Amiibo like games, so oh boy, we'll see what happens. So, download sales trend 2016. I guess worldwide, they did a lot. No surprise. They've, at least Nintendo's embracing download and updates in DLC, so that's good. And then, of course, download sale ratio per region. Europe, not so much. Japan, not so much. Americas, well, maybe not, I don't know, South America, Canada, but in North America, yeah. A lot of people don't really care whether it's physical or digital, but for me, I'm always going to go physical first, then digital, unless there's some stipulation. And teaser is, I might do my thoughts on why I prefer physical than digital. I mean, there's a lot of factors be with it, but maybe in the long run. Alright, top download sales. Smash Brothers for the Wii U, no surprise. Smash Brothers for the 3DS. For uh, Mario Kart 8, the download book. Oh, okay. For okay, my mistake. The Smash Brother and Mario Kart 8 is only the downloadable content. Well, no crap. Unless you have a disc or a code. Pokemon Virtual Console. Yeah, I heard that sold well. Again, Fire Emblem Face downloadable content. Yeah, I mean it's it's a good price. The in America, the season pass is pretty good. So. Could do that, but apparently, m m most top virtual console software sold worldwide is Pokemon. I mean, they're showing the Japanese one red, green, and then there's blue, and then there's yellow. In America, it's red, blue, and yellow, but there's a, actually there's a twist to it. And another teaser I'll probably give my retrospective of Pokemon. Let's just say that the Lady Wada did have something to do with the American version of release. It's not as the same as the Japanese, but you won't, you can't tell. But there are some differences from what I heard. Alright, moving on from that one, let's see. Okay. 3DS, okay, so now they're talking about their effort for the next year. 3DS effort expands sale for major title, reach your broader demographic. More people, more general consumer, sales of major titles basically meaning maybe a promo, like pre order special, or Nintendo Select, who knows. And then, of course, uh, the next pick they're talking about is Pokemon Sun in Blue Worldwide Launch. It's not just winter 2016, that's with the fiscal year, but at May 10th, they made an announcement that. November 18, 2016 is the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon Worldwide. Can't wait for that one. And then some title. Okay, I'm going to move that one. And here's now the part when I did the bombshell. And this is what the big, big deal. So, well, let's recap. Everybody knows. I already gave my opinion about it. Nintendo NX, March 2017 Worldwide Launch. But again, the question is, is it going to be just portable? Is it a console? Is it together? Is it a new Geo X? We'll soon find out. Probably fall. I'm going to I'm gonna predict September 2016, there's going to be a special Nintendo Direct. So, of course, the bigger, another big bombshell is, and it's one that feature in this year's E3. In my opinion, personally, I don't think it's not a big deal, but for some, maybe it is. We will introduce the NX at another opportunity later this year. Maybe their own Twitch presentation. We'll see. And then their E3 years, they will be focusing only on the Legend of Zelda series. The, Le the Legend of Zelda Wii U. That's it. And apparently that's the confirmation. And 
they did announce what they're playing for E3, and they just said it was just Zelda. That's it. So, production and shipping policy for Wii U for the fiscal year ending March 2017. We plan to greatly reduce the amount of Wii U system produced and shipped for the fiscal year of ending March of 2016, or 2017, excuse me. And the rumor now they're being thrown is by March 2018, they're going to end production of Wii U. Yeah, no surprise. I mean, who else are buying Wii U? Unless you have a good reason to people why to buy Wii U. You know, Nintendo, you screwed up the Wii U. You marketed it bad. You didn't, people didn't get the Wii U. People, even some people on Nintendo, hardcore, left you because, you know, what you did, unfortunately. Yeah, so, yeah, they're, so now they're saying that they're going to cut their production starting the well starting this fiscal year ending of March 2017 so well yeah taking into consideration demand for the new NX hardware demand forecast we expect to ship 80,000 units okay uh, 800,000 okay just checking at least that's for Kirishima again at least it's lower than Iwata, the Lady Wada's <laughs> expectation with the Wii U. And the spoiler is, at one fiscal year, I can't remember when, he wanted, he basically had the gut to say, we're going to sell, sell, 9 million Wii U's by the fiscal year, because people are going to be happy, because it's HD, it's for the hardcore, Everybody will get a Nintendo Wii U, and then of course, before the fiscal year end, they had to fix their forecast. They had to lower the forecast from nine million to two, from three point eight million. So that's a big, big change, and a little bit of change for the 3DS. And yes, Iwata, Lele Iwata, he had made a mistake, but again, hey, you know that's in the past. It's all about the NX. Let's move on. Okay, smart device business. Have more consumer experience Nintendo's IP. Bingo. Let more people know what Nintendo is. I'm telling you, Mitomo, not bad. Not for everyone, but it's not bad. A for smart device business to profit the ball for its own on its own. We free to play, paid, who knows? Great synergy with a dedicated video game system business, which basically what it is, say, oh, I like this Mario game. I heard there's like a console dedicated one. Maybe I want to buy it and try it out. There you go. We will carefully select the IP to you to deliver high quality product. Again, good. And the bombshell is Fire Emblem is number two. Number three is Animal Crossing. And remember, five mobile game by the end of March 2017. That's basically it. So that's pretty good, smart for Nintendo. And then, of course, Mitomo. And yeah, okay, that's just talking about languages. Over 10 million users worldwide. Hey, I'm one of them. I gave my thoughts about Mitomo. It is not a bad social game, but it is not a game. But People were curious, and again, free to start. What's wrong? How can you go wrong with free to start? Okay, every, there's a lot of things can go wrong, but the key word is free. You can try it out. You don't like it? Delete it. Go black. Uh, I mean, go black. Excuse me. Go back playing Minecraft Pocket. And then, of course, future expansion for Mitomo for the update. They did do an update. One of the two newest one now is you can send personal or text message to your friend to join Mitomo or email maybe there's more I don't know how more add more Mitomo but okay you know what if you using Mitomo uh, come on man you know just um let's go try to add you know just um I don't know how to do it whatever let's move on and then of course future plan for for the smart device new application using two IPs and they did announce it. It's Fire Emblem and Animal Crossing. Yep, number two 
is the Fire Emblem franchise going to be an IP. So, again, I don't know what it is. I heard the story is going to be free to play. We'll see. And, okay, before I even move on, this is the whole Fire Emblem franchise. The whole game they did since the NES day all the way to the 3DS. There is the very first Fire Emblem game never brought it outside of Japan with Mart. He was, that's why the hero of Fire Emblem, because Mart is the, think of Mart as the very first one. The very first Animal Cross, uh, Fire Emblem main character. Like, I don't know what I'm saying. Whatever. So again, two for the Super Nintendo. And then, of course, there was one, the, uh, four for the GBA. And what you see here right now with the cursor, that's Roy. He was debuted in Melee. He was first in Melee before Fire Emblem, that one with Roy came in. So, again, there you go. And then the one that started with America was this Fire Emblem with Elwood and Lyra. Again, that's her name. And then I think that's Hector in the back. And then Sacred Stone. I bought it for 10 bucks at Circuit City. Yep. Ready? Okay. The one for the GameCube. At one point, there was a sale. $10 at GameStop. Didn't really... I had a chance to buy it. Didn't buy it. Didn't really care about it. But what happened was, I was buying too many gifts. And I just I had some... Credit limit problem. So, never bought it. Whatever. And then, this one. The sequel... What for the Wii? Never went down in price. So I wasn't going to pay $50 for it. So, Nintendo, Virtual Console, Wii, Virtual Console, you're doing good. You brought out all three Operation Rainfall RPG, Xenoblade Chronicles, Last Story, Pandora's Tower. Come on, you got to bring this game out on the Virtual Console Wii, Wii for the Wii U, Nintendo. They're not that bad. I've been playing the Kirby Dream Return to Dreamland. I'm having fun with it. Moving on. Okay, this one never came in America also. It's supposed to be some guidance story with Mart. I have no idea what it is. But this one here, believe it or not, I actually found this game. $10 at a Walmart. Played it. And it's basically a remake of the NES one with 3D graphics. So maybe I'll get back to it. But right now, <laughs> unfortunately, we even not so much a lot of release in America for Fire Emblem. Surprisingly, I do have some Fire Emblem games. Like I said, I uh, bought them cheap. Surprisingly, I don't know how I managed to do it. And then, of course, I bought that one also. Uh, Awakening, working on that one. And then, Burt Wright bought it. I had a coupon, so I bought it for 30 bucks. Yeah, I'm working on that one. They have to go with the other one. We'll see what happens. But anyway, yeah, that's the backstory of Fire Emblem. If people don't understand. Man, I'm rambling so much. I do apologize. But, yeah, you know, it's a long thing. So, of course, like I said, Fire Emblem is their second IP for the mobile. And then the third one is Animal Crossing. And, of course, the first Animal Crossing that came to uh, America was Animal Crossing... GameCube, which is this one. Yes, yeah, there's two versions in Japan. There was like a simple version, and then there was a better version that has an e-reader. They brought the later version. Smart thinking on Nintendo's part, because non-new game tend not to sell. And people bought the GameCube version because it has NES ROMs in it. That's the only reason. But for me, there was other things. I know I'm sick in the head because I got this game I bought this game, I bought this game, I really bought this game with the NFC reader, and I bought this game, Amiibo Festival. Really? You don't? You can't even make a free-to-play version? A free downloadable version to make the people buy a freaking Animal Crossing Amiibo Nintendo? Oh man, you guys suck! And you know what kind of sucked to me? I mean, I bought it at Black Friday, it was $10 off, and then somewhere in December, it went to $30, $30 for freaking Animal Crossing Amiibo board game, 
with the two amiibo. They're even trying to freak you and say, Hey, you better buy the first print or you're not going to get... Uh, dang it, now I forgot what the name of the brown dog. I know it's Isabel. Dang it! Oh, and I, I have that figure, but... Yeah, it was like... Because they're saying, Oh, it's limited. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nintendo. Smart. You know, way to sucker your Animal Crossing fans like myself. And then Amazon, at December before Christmas, it was freaking $30! $30! For freaking Animal Crossing board game. Ah! Ugh, I know, I know. I, I do apologize, but... Ugh. I made that. <laughs> Alright, so, again, Animal Crossing is a good game, but it's not for everyone. So, but that's their third IP. And apparently for this one, no one knows what it is yet. But somehow, apparently according to Kimishima, this game is going to be able to integrate with the Animal Crossing dedicated version. So, I have no idea. How does that work? Is that, remember both, both IP or both mobile game? Will not come out until fall of 2016, and they're free to start. So that's surprising. That's really surprising. All right. Wow, I've been talking for one hour here. So yeah, fall 2016. Strong game element with content that connects to our business. We'll see what happens. Of course, Mitomo positioned this title. Our priority is to raise awareness of Nintendo worldwide. Smart. Over 700% of users are overseas. Smart. For people who are not into Nintendo or not gamer, it will help Nintendo make people, again, awareness of what Nintendo is. That's the whole point. You got to do more. The problem for a while in the past was they were so secretive, they were so protective, like, oh, well, we can't, we well, don't trust you, we're not going to do Mario toys, World of Nintendo toys, or Cap because, you know, you had Captain N, and, yeah, and then the Mario cartoon, yay, the Legend of Zelda cartoon, yay, and if you want to watch those, you can watch it on Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, yay, so, but the, the whole point of the mobile is to, wear an, to show awareness for non-Nintendo fan or gamer. And then, of course, uh, they're talking about now My Nintendo, which is better than Club Nintendo. Again, you do get reward, and also, you basically have achievement. Again, it's a start. The achievement start, right now you only get achievement on Mitomo, and Miiverse, or Mitomo, the 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 Nintendo console and portable consoles hub by basically buying games you get an achievement from that one you, you go to Miiverse you get an achievement same goes with the eShop connecting your email I guess Nintendo account sign up I guess that's what I call it but again it is a start keep it up Nintendo make more game with achievement and then later on Integrate my Nintendo, put it on the console, you know, just like the PlayStation Trophy and the achievement for Microsoft. Keep it up. You should have done this already with the 3DS. I know they sort of did something with Street Plaza, Street Pass Plaza. It had an, uh, it has some achievement by playing the puzzle or the swap panel game and the. Ah, uh, what's that? Go f not find me. Um, me quest. Um, that that game, me quest, that comes with it. It's a start. Unfortunately, the other me games, me plaza game, there's there's no achievement, or maybe there is. If I probably download the added, who knows? But again, it is a start. Keep it up, Nintendo. And my Nintendo member, look what happened. It grows. Cause it's, I mean, here's my thing. Signing up an account is free. Come on. Unless some subscription you have to pay with a card or whatever. My Nintendo member is free. Anybody can sign up. Connect your Nintendo ID. You'll be fine. And again, three game. The first one is Mitomo, second is Fire Emblem, and the third is Animal Crossing. 
change in govern governance system. Transition to a company with an audit and supervisory committee. Introduce an executive office system. I have no idea what it is, but I know I heard there were some changes that's happening. Like Reggie and Miyamoto has a new, they have a new uh, job titles be, be, beside their old old one. They added some new one. So anyway, yeah, that's basically uh, their financial report ending in March 2016. It is 61% down because it started to slow down with the 3DS and the Wii U. Not really surprising. Nintendo Select helped move the software. Again, not surprising. The bombshell, I already explained that in my previous one. It is what it is. The mobile game, they're not screwing up. I know a lot of people don't like mobile, like Nintendo going mobile, but look what they're doing. They're doing differently that you don't, that's not tarnishing the Nintendo franchise. The first one is about me. It's Tomodachi on the phone without and the second two is going to be Fire Emblem Animal Crossing we'll see what it is watch that out maybe I'll give my thoughts about it on fall 2016 I mean it's a long way which yes it may it's not even E3 yet alright so let me just see if there's any interesting about the Q&A for Nintendo uh da 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 Okay, they're talking about first. Okay, this one's interesting. Curious question number one: Why is the Nintendo NX or Project NX going to be in March 2017? I even gave my opinion. I think it's a good move because you don't really need have to be in during like the Christmas sale because the first people going to buy are the people are the diehard Nintendo fan. They're going to be the sucker. They're going to be biting the bullet. And then once they got it, they're going to share it. They're going to give their opinion if they like it or not. Then the general consumer can follow suit. Makes sense. I agree with Kimishima. Because look what happened to the Wii U. Yeah, they, it was during Black Friday. Not a lot of people were buying Wii U's. They were buying PS3 and 360. And it showed even Black Friday that PS3 and 360 outsold the Wii U. And there's something wrong there. Okay, Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem. Okay, they're just saying why they picked them up. Whatever. Mitomo. Surprising about the uh, Mitomo user, Nintendo account, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. Well, let's just try to finish this. Ta -da. Yeah, I'm just really rambling right now. They're not really that Interesting, I would like to confirm the future business, being about to stay a challenge, blah blah blah, okay, I have no idea. I just know you're not going to talk about the NX, what's the deal is? Oh, yes, question number five. Well, how come, not, how come you're not announcing NX and why is it also March 2017? Another one I agree with, Kimishima, we need games. We need games when the console or the system launched March 2017. Again, I agree. Because... Wii U had games in November, December, January, somehow February, March, April, May, until June. There was no Nintendo games, there was no Wii U games. It was collecting sh dust. Look at Alex, he bought a Wii U, didn't like it, sold it back. Same goes with Helsing 920, he sold it back. There wasn't enough game. They weren't dedicated to Nintendo enough to basically justify keeping a Wii U. Makes sense what Kinishima did. Mitomo, new IP, but risk. Eh, well, you know, there's always going to be a risk. Okay, uh, key performance. Uh, key performance indicator. I have no idea what that is. I think important to develop the same IP for a decade. The importance. Yeah, like I said, where awareness, that's my opinion. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, okay. Da -da -da. software, yeah, there you go. Question number eight is about the software one. What's in question number five? My apologies, but you got the idea. Okay, cash man, what the heck? Okay, I have no idea what that one is. Then. 
smart devices. Okay, while well, Wii U sales physical ending March 20th are predicted to be very weak, with the NX sale and profit contributing included, including this prediction, the number very confident NX is already. Okay, so question number 11 is interesting because they are already admitting that the Wii U is uh, it's done, but with the NX 800,000, because they're being more aware because, like I said. The late Iwata said, 9 million, going to be 9 million sold for the fiscal year, and that didn't happen. So, Kishima, Prasuk Kishima, he is being more realistic. So, uh, well, that's an, a lot of interesting. I mean, if you want to read this business stuff, I'll provide a link on the description box. But again, it is not really that important for a lot of people to know. Just some part, but again, you gotta keep it in the back of your head. Just you have to think about this. If it sells, they'll make more. If it doesn't sell, they'll back off. That's how the business works. Sorry, corporation, it is what it is. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the fiscal year that's ending with March 2016. So, of course, the next one is we're gonna see. Well, we don't know what's gonna happen next now. I know they're just gonna show Zelda Wii U on E3, but we'll see what happens. So, anyway. That's it for now. I'll see you guys later. Oh, and by the way, thanks for listening.